So uh, in today's talk, I'm doing, um, I will focus on uh, some uh, thing called Hashi homology, and it's in relation to deformation of uh, Hilbert schemes of points on surfaces. A classical, uh, classical problem in algebraic geometry. Uh, as a plan of talk, uh, first of all, I will I will introduce Hashi homology and its relation to deformation. With a general uh, preliminary, that will pass to the main results on the results on Hilbert schemes of points on surfaces. Then um, I will try to give some application in classical uh, problems. Uh, then um, I will give some idea of the proof of the main theorem and its uh, generalizations to uh, and generalization to, uh, to its natural context of uh, symmetric stacks, to a symmetric stacks of any dimension. And in the end, uh, some spin off of our main uh, generalization result of this generalization, I want to do, uh, well, I can call it some kind of spin off on the so called Boissier conjecture. Some corrected version of the Boisier conjecture. Uh, in this talk, uh, the proofs are not uh, difficult, um, but I think the interesting part is that uh, this project uh, um, raises many, many questions. I will try to list some of them uh, during the talk. Okay. So let me start with the, the first part. So uh, let me uh, uh, give you the definition of homology. So uh, let's x be a uh, smooth, uh, I don't think it's necessary, but let me just uh, assume that it's also a projective variety. Okay, in this talk I will work over a field uh, of characteristic zero. Uh, okay, and uh, also uh, the same definition works for the orbifold or in more general setting for smooth proper need more for stats or define over k of course then uh, the so called Hoshi cohomology of x is defined as uh, as follows so it's the it's the group okay in the variety given by x cross x, phi over k, given by the diagonal in many of the structure sheaf uh, is itself. So here, delta is the, so okay, I did remember stack, it's just phi and f, is the diagonal uh, morphism from x to the, to the self product. Okay? So you could also put uh, all the case together, then you got the yeah, with the all K together. Yeah, also, even in a more uh, intrinsic way, you could also look at the uh, home. I will use both notations interchangeably. So you could try to uh, keep the cohomology uh, at this complex in the dual category. So this is the Hashi cohomology. Um, for later use, I will also define the Hashi homology. Right. Of X, its definition is uh, similar. Instead of using uh, our home or self extension, you can use the uh, derived tensor product and take the global section of the structure sheet of the diagonal. Okay. By rotating duality, it's nothing else but uh, our home of uh, again in X cross X. The structure shift of the diagonal and the uh, push forward of the shift of the uh, canonical model. Okay. Um, in this talk, I will use a piece of notation that is convenient. I want to promote uh, the unit. Uh, I will denote by the shifted um, canonical by uh, omega bar. So for any variety of stack, I will write omega bar as uh, omega x, shifted by dx. It's really convenient for the rest of the 
and it's for some reason, you know, you recognize it as some uh, frame character of the Suppose on the diagonal of the frame character of the seraphant. So the first remark is that uh, this is a derived invariant. Which makes them uh, useful. Yes. First remark is that optical homology, optical homology are derived invariant. Meaning that if you have uh, two varieties of two stacks that are uh, that have equivalent uh, derived category of bounding coherent sheaves. Then they are Hashi cohomology and Hashi homology are uh, isomorphic. Okay? And uh, as they are derived invariant, you can ask, okay, whether this can be uh, defined directly using the derived category. Well, that is possible. So, more generally, you can consider even uh, some, uh, some smooth DG, a smooth buffer DG category. For example, the bounded derived category of the on coherent shifts on, on X. Then uh, let me denote by S A the uh, Sarah function. So I learned that uh, uh, for in the context of smooth proper DG category, Sarah function is not really a DG function always. It's rather a, a quasi function. But then you could use like stable infinity category. Then this is a, uh, an honest infinity uh, category, uh, infinity function. Okay, whatever uh, you can uh, define this cohomology of this category as just the self extension. So uh, let me just use our home in the category of DG functor to itself, which is, can also be written as A0 times A, the enveloping algebra. Then I uh, use this, uh, use this uh, identity, functor, identity. Functor. It's the self extension of the identity functor. And you can see the structure sheet, the diagonal is indeed the free mechanical kernel of the uh, identity functor from the derived category of X to itself. And uh, similarly, the Hoshi homology of A can be de defined as, okay, let me write this, AA as the identity functor to the self functor. Identity, represented identity functor and the uh, structure shift, or the shifted uh, canonical on the diagonal represents the uh, serial functor. Okay. So this is just to say that there are uh, general definitions in the context of uh, uh, smooth proper DG category. Actually, even beyond that, you just need a DG category, but then the definition should be slightly uh, generalized. Okay, another uh, remark is that um, actually over this uh, vector spaces, there are uh, more uh, structures. There are more, more st higher structures, just more structures. Uh, for example, Hoshi cohomology is a ring because you can compose uh, compose this uh, from, yeah, morphism between the identity functors, and the Hoshi cohomology is a module over that ring. And uh, in a, a deeper study, you can uh, also uh, uh, you can also construct a certain uh, Lie bracket of degree minus one of the Hoshi cohomology and make that uh, an, uh, a Lie algebra, a module over that Lie algebra, which is called the Gersten Haber algebra structure. So all these package, like an algebra, a module, Gersten Haber algebra, Gersten Haber module, together and with their compatibility is called the Gersten Haber uh, calculus. Uh, the whole package is a derived invariant. So this makes them uh, quite interesting uh, invariant in the in the study of derived categories. Okay? But I, in this talk, I will not use these uh, uh, structures. So, what is the yeah. yeah, they are isomorphic. Yeah. So, you cannot say more than just at the level of this group. So yes, more precisely, if you, so this means if phi dbx, to give you a, a, a more general than that, but let me just stay with, the, with this context, a framework isomorphic uh, equivalence, then phi induces 
an isomorphism between the package. Sorry? Yes, yes, it's a graded isomorphism, a ring isomorphism, module isomorphism, just a hardware algebra. So it's a very uh, strong, uh, strong uh, structure. Yeah. Right. And how to get uh, some uh, feeling of this uh, invariance? Um, for me, the most important uh, way to understand it is so-called Hoch Hochschild Kostner Rosenberg isomorphism. Hochschild Kostner Kostner Rosenberg isomorphism. So I will abbreviate HKR in the rest of the talk. It's a long name. Uh, HKR isomorphism. It's a theorem okay. in the algebraic setting due to uh, HKR, but uh, yeah, it's uh, subsequently generalizing much greater generality. So in the, the same context, in the same context, same context, it's a smooth uh, proper beyond that. Even any, uh, yeah, okay. No, uh, so in this case, let me uh, be elementary for now. So this proper uh, variety over a field of characteristic zero. Okay, this is one of the hypotheses there, standing hypothesis. Then we have uh, HHK, say, uh, X is isomorphic. To the direct sum p plus q equals to k of h q of x uh, with uh, the polymetric field. So, as vector space, it just decomposing to uh, some coherent, uh, some cohomological coherent sheets. <coughs> Similarly, uh, h h lower k. So, Hoshi homology is something uh, symmetric with respect to a zero. So, the p minus q. Equals to k, so it's not like a Hausdorff conversion. P minus q, is q of x of omega x p. Okay. So if you put the Hausdorff diamond, then uh, if you sum up vertically, then you get the Hausdorff homology. And then, yes. So which parts of the discussion here make the things to fail for Artinstein? Hmm. Uh, it doesn't fail. I think I guess it's still defined. Uh, as long as you have a, as long as you have a DG category, all these two invariants are defined. Um, yeah, you're right. It's defined, but uh, in some of the results that I'm going to use, uh, I only know references in uh, DM stack setting. But I don't exclude that it's uh, it's wrong. I thought there's no properness at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the Hoshi homology and the Hoshi homology are nevertheless defined. No, no, Right. Uh, so, yeah, why? So, why we consider Hoshi cohomology? Because this is very useful in the uh, deformation theory, actually, in the non commutative deformation theory, or the deformation theory of the category. Questions? So, why consider mutation? So the so the so the answer is that it controls deformation theory. Deformation of the category. Or we can say it's a non-commutative deformation of the X itself. Okay? So the Deformation and the automorphism. Deformation and the automorphism of the category. Okay. Um, right. So the first thing is that okay, the uh, 
automorphism of the uh, category. Uh, yeah, the, the Lie algebra of the automorphism group of the autoequivalence group of the derived category is given by H H1 of X. And you can see a little bit of why in the decomposition of HKR is that it's decomposing to X of X and H0 of X of the tangent. So this is a tangent space of PK, tangent space of the PK of X. This is, a this is the Lie algebra of the automorphism of X. So it says that, uh, so an automorphism of X, like a geometric automorphism of X, gives you. Sorry, uh, may I ask a question? Sure, sure. Encouraged. Uh, so, so the second problem in the is that uh, the Horsey homology has to do with the uh, Dolbo homology. Yes, yes. Uh, so this is good because Dolbo homology has to do with uh, Betty homology, at least uh, using the Hodge decomposition. So my question is uh, whether the, uh, there is a topological version of Horsey uh, homology where uh, you actually get uh, it relative to Betty homology. Yeah, there is a character map from uh, Hodge homology to uh, to some uh, to the topological K theory of the category, which is. Uh, which is isomorphic to the to the homology up to tensor with Q at least. No, we have looked at. The... No, sorry. The, there is a, there is some character map from the K theory to topological to topological K theory to Hashi homology. I think. Yeah. Have to check. Yeah, but they are they are strongly related, and you can see the dimensions also there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, uh, let me continue. So this is the so any automorphism of X gives you a non commutative I mean. The yeah. community lies uh, auto equivalence of the derived category. So you can see this uh, infinitesimal symmetry of X gives you infinitesimal symmetry of the category. On the other hand, you, for, uh, whenever you have a line bound, you can tensor it. Uh, the tensor tensorization with this line bound gives you also an auto equivalence of the category. So this uh, uh, infinitesimal uh, symmetry also reflects in the derived category level. So this uh, gives you this auto, auto, auto equivalence. Or Morphism of the category. And, uh, and the tangent space of the deformation, whatever how this is defined, whenever it's defined, it should be isomorphic to HH2 of X. And there's the HKR isomorphism tells you that this is has three pieces H2 of the structure sheath, and H1 of the tangent, and H0. Of the bitangent. And this you recognize by Kodara uh, Spencer, this is just the geometric deformation of X. So a deformation of X gives you a deformation of its derived category, as you can imagine. And this, uh, this is an entertainment space of a Bravo group. So uh, if you, yeah, so this is like uh, give a, a stacky or jury uh, deformation of the category. If you work with KG surface, you can put like a uh, a Bravo class to uh, deform <coughs> the derived category of the K3 surface into the derived category of twisted K3 surface. And this is indeed in this direction, called a non commutative deformation. And this is, uh, uh, at least for the surface case, it's called a Poisson structure. And this is uh, this uh, classically known to give a non commutative deformation. It really gives a deformation of the derived uh, category itself. Again, in the context of K3 surface, you can see that, okay, there is a, a canonical. Uh, <coughs> Form, the existence of a canonical form gives you a non commutative deformation of K3 surface. Indeed, uh, you can deform the derived category of a K3 surface into something like a component of a cubic four foot, for example, which is no longer a K3, but a non commutative K3 surface. Okay? So, this just tells you that, uh, yeah, that, that uh, deformations and uh, automorphism are controlled by the Hodge cohomology. But just like in the commutative case, uh, this is the uh, tangent space of geometric deformation. The H2 is the obstruction space to uh, defor geometric deformation. Uh, it also has obstruction space. It is, yeah, let's say, equal to it must be contained in the HH3 of X. And if you look at the, uh, the HKR decomposition, then you get H3 of X, H2, X tangent. H1 of x uh, by tangent, 
and a to zero. And these uh, uh, given uh, an element in the uh, in the direction of the in the tangent space of the deformation, uh, its obstruction is given by the so-called uh, right bracket. Yes. Just a question. I mean, in the, in the, what you just said in the deforming Yes, you're right. So, uh, so when you deform the derived category, you should consider three components at the same time. So, uh, your question is probably once I give you a, di a direction, do I get a non uh, twisted uh, somehow uh, uh, deformation? Well, if you deform from one of the has to be minus towards the general theory. Mm -hmm. Is that in the first order deformation, can it really happen to be just an A0 of first two? No, I think so. It's really identified to the deformation space of the of the category. Ah, but no, but uh, so it also picks out only one. I mean, not not every deformation of the of the case is, is. So that's not true. Yeah, that's why you need the two. Whether the decomposition, whether it's given as a decomposition, or whether it's obtained as grading after a filtration, is the is the decomposition canonical? I mean, there are some choice of HKR isomorphism. Indeed, there is some subtlety. There are several natural choices of HKR isomorphism, and all of them, of course, give different identification of the tangent space of deformation space to these uh, three pieces. I mean, not to incur the uh, kind of the problem you were asked. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, the, all the how these three factors um, uses deformation at the uh, of the derived category at the infinitesimal level is written in uh, Toda's uh, classical paper. So those, this uh, space uh, HD of uh, X, O, X, does it uh, really appear as an obstruction space? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what I want to say is there are results uh, like uh, Ran or Clemens, Ran saying that some, some obstructions, in fact, do not really appear, especially for, for example, if you have this categoriality yeah, because, of, um, because of the, you know, the, the theoretic one meeting principle. Exactly. Uh, this is the linear theorem. Right. And uh, so my question is, uh, because you have this first term, which looks like uh, mm -hmm. it does not really appear as an obstruction. Yeah, you're right. So there is some something called just a half of bracket. So it could be that this uh, element is now zero, this space is now zero. However, the just a half of bracket is zero. That tells you that this deformation is unobstructed. Yeah. So that's why it's uh, just an uh, inclusion. Yeah. And computing the just a half of bracket in terms of these three uh, this uh, uh, HKR isomorphism is highly non trivial. I think it's uh, not even uh, systematically studied. It uh, should be some open question. How to, of course, it de depends on the isomorphism chosen. Okay. So, for surface, you're saying that all the vectors are to satisfy the young, exactly. Yes, yes. In yes. iron dimension? Yeah, it's not, uh, but what, what are those deformations that are not Poisson? So, you have a Poisson structure, but the, the non complete deformation somehow is obstructed. But they, they are not necessarily Poisson deformation in higher dimension because maybe the Jacobi identity that is, is not satisfied. So already an element here is not necessarily a Poisson structure. Okay. For surface, yes, but in general. Exactly. Not, yeah. So if you take a non Poisson deformation, mm -hmm. what, what, what's happening? Yeah. I mean, if you take a B vector that is yeah. not Poisson. Uh -huh. What, what, oh, you mean higher correct? dimension? I mean, it corresponds still to a non-commutative deformation, or it's a tangent direction in the in the in the deformation space. But whether it's obstructive, you have to compute the, the bracket mm -hmm. and whether it vanishes or not. It's just like the usual deformation. Yes, you have this, and then you have the, <coughs> a bracket here. But I mean, to be a non-commutative deformation, you need to be uh, tangent to a Poisson vector, or can be any. No, non-commutative deformation is really a combination of all three. You cannot really separate all of them. So like, this is like purely not competitive in some sense, yes. Okay, good. So uh, this is just to justify that Hashi cohomology is important to, to, uh, to understand the automorphism and the deformation theory. However, the problem is that Hashi cohomology is very, uh, in general, complicated to compute. Because first of all, it's not factorial. So Hashi homology is a factorial whenever you have a free one kind of functor. Uh, you, can have a, you can induce a morphism between the Hashi homology. However, this is not true for Hashi cohomology. Only when it's uh, fully phased for equivalence, then you can induce some isomorphism, as I, read, I write there. And also, second thing is that Hashi homology is additive. However, Hashi cohomology is not. 
That means that if you have a semi-orthogonal decomposition of the derived category, then the Hashi homology is just the direct sum of the Hashi homology on each component. For example, this allows you to compute Hashi homology of some kudos of components. However, however, Hashi cohomology does not satisfy this additivity. So in general, there is no way to compute it, even if the category is given as a kudos of component of some geometric category. So today's uh, main goal is to try to uh, convince you that in some cases we can still compute it uh, in a somehow uh, different uh, way. Okay? So this is the introduction for Hoshi cohomology. Uh, then let me uh, say about the main result. Oh, here's a scheme that we obtain. So let x be a smooth or projective surface defined over k, always in characteristic zero, and the uh, and then is a, a number. Then the Hilbert scheme of n points on S is a smooth projective variety. So smooth this is a work of variety. Smooth projective variety of dimension 2 n. And it's the somehow cracking resolution of the uh, symmetric product. So this is the symmetric product. So S to n <coughs> by the permutation action. So this is the cracking resolution by rational map. <coughs> this is probably the only time that I'm going to pronounce by rational. Um, yes. Now you can ask how. So the general question is how to compute invariance of, uh, of the Hilbert scheme in terms of in, in terms of the invariance of uh, the surface. Okay? This is the general question. And there are many results in this direction. I guess in the 90s and 80s and 90s. This is a very really, uh, fashionable subject. And I will list some results that I know. Motivate uh, another new result. Okay. So the first result that came to mind is the classical work of uh, Goethe computing the Betty numbers of the Hilbert scheme. Even actually, a host structures. Rational host structures. Of the Hilbert scheme can be uh, indeed determined by, by the Hoshi, uh, um, by the Hoshi structure of the surface. So Hoshi, this is isomorphic to R is due to position. And for hot structures, etc., is due to the general solver. In the uh, 1993, I checked yesterday. So this is due to, uh, yeah, so you take all the uh, partitions of n, and you take the, uh, the tensor product of, uh, yeah. So for each partition, you write it as 1 a a1 times 1, A2 times 2, etc. Just as a partition. So the sum of I, A, I is N. And uh, you take I, uh, you take uh, the symmetric of A, I in the greatest sense of H star of S uh, with rational coefficients, and then, uh, then you uh, twist it a little bit by I. Uh, no, not by I, I minus 1. Uh, there is more. Uh, there is a more compact way to write it. So it's, if you take all the Hilbert scheme at the same time, Tn, 
Now this is just isomorphic, so I insert some uh, form of variable t just to keep track of the n. Then it's just the symmetric, total symmetric, of the directed sum uh, of the uh, hs, uh, t to the i, and you have to put some uh, take a twist to make all the gradients and all structures work. Minus one. Okay. So this is the formula. So uh, uh, in the rest of the talk, I will uh, use both uh, expressions interchangeably, so they are actually the equivalent uh, uh, equivalent uh, formulation of the same result. Okay? So these are the Hodge uh, structure uh, for Hilbert scheme, and also uh, you can ask for motives. Then the same uh, result holds if you replace all the uh, cohomology by a motives. This is uh, this is the work of the Tato, Miolini. Okay. And also by HKR, we know that uh, we can compute the Hodge homology. Uh, it's erased in in terms of the, uh, at least the dimension in terms of the uh, Hodge numbers. So using this uh, isomorphism, you can compute the dimension of the Hodge homology, and you get Hodge homology of the Hilbert scheme. Let me just write the compact way. Zero, then this is isomorphic to the oops, symmet total symmetric power of the direct sum of I of the homology, because it's a P minus Q equals to K, so you no longer need to shift T I. Okay, you just get this. Uh, what had? Yeah, also there are other ones by uh, adding the shred, adding the shred. Uh, good shred. Uh, Good sure. Sorry? HKR, one of the stars. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's kind of the key point. <laughs> so today, today's goal is to compute Hodge homology. Um, so this is easy because we have the Hodge decomposition and, uh, yeah, uh, not Hodge decomposition, but HKR is morphine. So we can deduce uh, uh, this result easily from <coughs> this result. Thanks. Uh, and maybe uh, say that the cobordism class, class of the Hilbert scheme is computed solely by uh, oops, sorry, solely by uh, the class by, by, by the class of Of S. Okay? So all the genus, genera that you can define uh, for, uh, for, for a smooth projective, right? Uh, for these complex manifold, actually, uh, you can compute those genera for, uh, for uh, the Hilbert scheme in terms of the genera for, for S. Okay? This is the complex cobordism? Yeah, complex cobordism uh, uh, ring. Okay? And also, as I alluded to, uh, there are higher structures on this uh, Hoshi cohomology and Hoshi homology. You can ask, and also on, on cohomology, usual cohomology, you can ask how to compute uh, the ring structure of the cohomology in terms of the, in terms of the cohomology ring, for example, on S. And, um, and uh, this is a non-trivial work, uh, highly non-trivial work, I would say, of uh, Zolger and uh, Lin, in the case that S has a numerically trivial canonical bundle, and actually where S has a non-numerically -tri non trivial canonical bundle, such a ring structure is, uh, is computed, but in a highly non-trivial way, uh, even a more complicated way, uh, using uh, like a Gromov-Witten theory of uh, the Hilbert child morphism. So it's, so it's an even more complicated ring structure on the cohomology. So let me just simply write the name and Zoger and uh, that's one, we chain one, etc. It's a whole series of uh, difficult uh, work. Good. Um, so now the question, what about what about the invariant that uh, we are interested in 
to understand the deformation, or uh, more generally, the non commutative deformation of the Hill scheme. How do we compute that in terms of the, of the Cauchy code, in, in terms of invariance, sorry, in terms of invariance of S? So the observation, first of all, the negative observation, is that, uh, that's kind of the starting point of our project, is that this is not determined by the Hauschi cohomology or even with Hauschi cohomology uh, combined of S. So this guy is not, even for the dimension, is not determined by the Hauschi cohomology of S and even you put Hauschi cohomology of S. Okay. So what is not? What is not determined? The dimension? The dimension is not. Yeah. So let me give an example. And the computation of the example uses our main example. Let me compute the, the dimensions. So, so, so here, the implicit this means that the VR correspondence is not compatible with calculating. Sorry? The, the DK, uh, Bridge and the King, um, yeah. they can express the direct category of SN mm -hmm. in terms of yes. uh, S. Yes. And then, but, but this suggests that when you calculate the Hoshio cohomology, it's not easily. No, it's not. It's actually the approach we took. And uh, first of all, it becomes an orbifold because the, uh, BKR, yes. the other side of the BKR is, uh, is an orbifold. Yes. And uh, you need a HKR for this orbifold setting, in the optimal setting, and that creates somehow, uh, you can see immediately that these two events are not in our If you just wait a few minutes, yeah. So let me put, uh, so if S is a bilitic surface, so let's say E cross F, two is the curves quotient by some single group, uh, G, that acts on as a automorphism of E and uh, as a torsion translation of F, then the quotient is uh, like that, and you get a bilateral surface. So the order of the canonical bond of S could be, let's call it a G, could be two, three, four, six. Okay? Maybe I don't have time to write all these uh, dimensions, but only write a uh, like a dimension. Let's see. Yeah. Oops. So this is a D, the order of the order of the uh, canonical bundle, and this is a dimension of, of, uh, of S. So uh, let me see, Hoshi cohomology goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, twice of the dimension. And the dimension is uh, when, the, when, the, when the order is, uh, let's skip, okay, let's skip it anyway. The order is 2 is 2, 1, one two, sorry, 2, 1, one, 2. If order is 3 or 4 or 6, then it's 1, 2, 1, 0, 0. I mean, this is uh, easy to compute. And the Hoshi homology, for well, Hodge homology of the surface, you know it's determined by the Hodge, uh, Hodge diamond. Let me just write the Hodge diamond for you. This is uh, 1, 1, 1. Yeah, this is uh, 0, uh, 2, 0, 1, 1, 1. Yeah, the Hodge diamond of bilateral surface looks like that. In any case, there's no distinction between all the 3, 4, and 6. And they are all the same dimension. However, however, for the Dimension of the Hoshi cohomology of the Hilbert scheme. Let me just write Hilbert 2. In fact, this uh, can be generalized for any Hilbert scheme. Uh, D. Uh, so let me write uh, 0, 1. This time, this guy is dimension 4, so I have to go to 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8. So don't worry, it's not very long. So it's a 2, uh, 3, and 4 or 6. They are different from 3. So if it's 2, it's a 1, 2, 3. 8, 12, 8, 3, 2, 1. Uh, if it's 3, then it's 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 5, uh, 1, 0, 0. And if it's order 4, 6, it's different. It's 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay? As you can see, uh, for order 3 and order 4, by elliptic surface, they are Hoshi cohomology and Hoshi cohomology of the same dimension, however, the uh, Hoshi cohomology of the Hilbert square is of different dimension. And also for later use, I want you to uh, remember that H2, this is H2, which uh, counts, about the, accounts for the deformation. So here the number is 2 and 1. And here I can also look at the deformation. 
tangent, tangent space of deformation, and if this is three and a two, okay, two. So it's always one dimensional higher indicates that the potential of one new uh, deformation uh, direction. And it will be in either case for a uh, biometric surface. Is the module structure also the same for 3.6? No, that's a, that's a good question. So I, I can actually, uh, it's unfair as a, as a question, because I didn't say how determined by. So I, what I want to just say is that the dimension is not determined by the dimension. Could be the case that, uh, but I don't believe it. It could be the case that uh, in this example, if you take into account the module structure, the hub structure, etc., you can recover uh, somehow see the difference between all the three and all the four. I don't know. I didn't check. But uh, at least for the dimension, it doesn't work. Okay. So what kind of event do we need to in, to calculate uh, to calculate the uh, Hashi cohomology of the Hilbert scheme? Uh, so I need to in introduce some uh, invariant. I couldn't say it's new, because it's already uh, appeared in the work of uh, Orloff, like more than 60 years ago, and also in the book of Daniel. Uh, and Kadran also informed us last week that it's also in his old work, uh, but nobody gave a name. Uh, we just gave it a name, that's our contribution. Uh, no, but, okay, our contribution is also that this, uh, to remind people that this is the inherent which do not forget about it. This is a so-called Hoshi's, we call them Hoshi's cell homology. So, uh, definition, Hoshi cell cohomology. So it's a, just a generalization of the Hoshi cohomology and the Hoshi homology, and the definition is completely the same. Objections on the terminology, or? <laughs> yeah, it's not very good because it reminds me of Hodge's spectral sequence. But I don't think we can have confusion about Hodge's in this uh, <laughs> combination. Okay, yeah, so let X again be a smooth, proper, proper variety or DM stack. And the same definition, um, Hodge's cell, ah, yes, so I need to fix K. Indeed, it's a fixed. Okay. So this is a, itself is a graded uh, uh, like the space. And by definition, it's our home. So I prefer not to write this down already because I want to use just a home x cross x uh, of the just look like the Hoshi, um, Hoshi cohomology. Instead of using the push forward of the structure sheet for Hoshi, as for Hoshi cohomology or the shifted. Uh, Canonical for Hoshi homology, here I consider any powers of cell functor. So it's omega uh, shifted. Uh, so is the notation. Okay. So in general, in general, uh, it's just, uh, oops, Hoshi cell uh, cohomology of some smooth proper DG category, you define it as R home. Of the A, the enveloping uh, category given by identity A and the cell function of A to the power of K. Okay, so it's also a divided invariant. It's also so yeah. I guess I have to cite all of. Uh, yes, yes, you can allow negative powers. Yes, yes, any K, but fixed. So for each K, we have a theory. In that sense, colors, colors, bars. Uh, no. Uh, yes. Uh, maybe I'm not a mathematician. Um, uh, it's it's a divided event. It's a. No, no, no. That's that's <laughs> I know it's my hand. <laughs> okay. And also, I want to say there are some higher structures, just as for Hoshi homology. It's a bi-graded ring because I didn't write the. You can take the uh, I's homology, so it's bi-graded ring. And it also has a Gerstner Haber bracket, and it's also uh, Cadararo informed us last week that it's also a Frobenius algebra. So there are a bunch of uh, higher structures on this uh, space. Uh, uh, and it's a derived invariant, the whole package is a derived invariant, and that makes an even stronger invariant for, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, a category or a derived invariant. So uh, let me just remind you that HS0 is nothing but Hoshi cohomology, 
and the HS1, if you look at that condition, it's just a function homology. So we recover two classic invariants as a 0 and 1, I mean, with A. And also at HS, uh, um, for, yeah, for K, um, it's just a, a little bit of a shift. This is just a, a canonical, yeah, a canonical, yeah, canonical, uh, let's say, so like pluri canonical or pluri anti canonical space. Okay, so if you take all the K together, you get a canonical or anti canonical ring. Okay, so we can recover several interesting uh, classical invariants in this context. So now I can finally uh, announce the. Only for this piece, there are no other pieces that have some explicit description. Only this piece? So. <laughs> I mean, you are taking HSK for a particular. Uh, yeah, the other, I mean, I don't know how explicit you want, but that, the definition is ex extremely explicit. No, that, in terms maybe of uh, polyvectors. Um, that's a good question. It's uh, HKR is morphism. Yes, yes. Uh, it's exactly. HK, yes, yes. HKR is morphism. Extends in this setting. I will probably come to that when I go to the proof. I don't know. If, uh, so the theorem that we prove is that uh, so we can compute as is a smooth projective surface over K. As usual, then uh, we can compute so for a K fixed. Fixed. Um, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, fixed. Then, uh, then uh, let me just write a compact way of writing uh, things together. So H, H, no. So we can actually compute the H uh, Hoshi cohomology in terms of the Hoshi Serra cohomology of the surface. So the new invariant is that we can in, uh, include more powers of the cell function. But however, you can ask, okay, now you have a new event, how to compute the hoshi serre cohomology of the Hilbert scheme? Well, that, in that case, the hoshi serre cohomology of the Hilbert scheme is determined by the hoshi serre cohomology of S. So let me just write H S K. So the K is actually fixed for the Hilbert scheme. Let me introduce a uh, formal variable T just to keep track of the uh, dimension. It is isomorphic to the total symmetric of the direct sum of I. Uh, I probably don't have space for the most important part. The HS, you see it? 1 plus K minus 1I of S, T to the I. It's not here, okay? um, So here it's already a graded, so if you want, I can put a star here. Uh, it's already a graded uh, vector space. So here it's a stair grading, and uh, this direct sum, and the total symmetric power is in a graded sense with respect to this grading, but for this formal variable grading, you just, uh, everything is commutative, you don't put a sign whatsoever. Okay, so if you look at the case of k equals two, uh, the easy one, k equals to one, then indeed we recover the formula that I wrote uh, somewhere, that the Hoshi homology is computed by, if you put k equals to one, then the only things disappear, you get the Hoshi homology, again, of the surface. So that's why Hoshi homology of the Hilbert scheme is determined by the Hoshi homology of the uh, of the surface. However, however, the Hoshi cohomology of the of the Hilbert scheme, which means that I take k equals to zero, then I get something interesting on the right hand side, which is a symmetric of i at least one of H s. So now I cannot really uh, take just the Hoshi cohomology, or even Hoshi homology, you get this uh, result. And uh, you can see when i is 1, it's just indeed the information of Hoshi cohomology. When, when i is 2, it's a new piece of cohomology theory. It's h minus 1, uh, Hoshi cell cohomology, that contributes to the uh, Hoshi cohomology. Yeah, our proof is a canonical. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a natural isomorphism. <laughs> Yeah, that's in the proof. Uh, yeah. The first step of the proof is to change the left hand side by uh, bridge line P rate and uh, result of Hyman to change it into a symmetric quotient stack. That's what you mean, right? But uh, let me uh, first write down the some uh, low degree consequences.
Soy Claudio Ruiz. So when uh, <coughs> so you can recover H H1 and you can see that it gives H H1. Yes. Okay, no problem. H H2 is H H2 of S plus H2 of H H1 of S plus a new piece H S uh, minus one to be two of S. So this is actually the canonical, the anti-canonical uh, section. Yeah? Uh, and H H three, I, I don't have time to write it down, but you can, uh, I mean, you can extract any information you want from the from the uh, from the computation. So let me uh, ah yes. So uh, an obvious obvious question is that okay now we have uh, computed the Hashi cohomology of the Hilbert scheme as graded vector space. So how to compute the uh, the, the algebra structure, how to compute the module structure, E bracket, etc. These we don't know. So we don't have any idea to approach these uh, kind of questions uh, for now. But, uh, it's definitely an interesting question, and we really need it to fully understand the deformation theory because we need to just have a bracket to understand if uh, some obstruction is, uh, some uh, deformation direction is obstructive. But uh, for now, we don't know how to compute. Okay, but uh, let me. Go to the application that I have in mind. Is any confusion the low degree you get? Is uh, the Hilbert scheme is it n equal to or? It's for any n. Any n, so you don't. Okay, but the right. Uh, and, and at least the two, yeah, sorry. No, but the right hand side doesn't depend on n somehow? No, it depends, it doesn't depend. And, uh, as long as n is at least two. <laughs> if okay. n is one, it's just uh, this one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's uh, some stability. But uh, yeah, it's a bit like uh, a cohomology, you know, uh, for a very large, for, for, I mean, for a given degree, for n large enough, the cohomology doesn't depend on the on n. So. Um, some sort of uh, Nakajima uh, operators? Yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah, I, I said, okay, how to compute the algebra structure bracket. And also for cohomology, you have this uh, Fox space structure. It's the Heisenberg Lie algebra with this uh, cup product pairing. Uh, and the, uh, for Hashi homology, the total sum is uh, the uh, Fox space of this uh, Heisenberg Lie algebra. However, here uh, we try to understand this uh, direct sum. Obviously, it's not some Fox space, but uh, do I have some operations that uh, um, can I can I interpret this as some uh, natural representation of some Lie algebras? We don't know, but there are some uh, work of. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot the names, but uh, they have some categorical action that can that that mimics Nakajima and Bronowski. Uh, that could, in principle, give some uh, explanation of this, uh, this action. But uh, yeah, for the time being, I don't know the compatibility of our isomorphism and their categorical action. Okay. Okay. So uh, applications. So let me look at these uh, isomorphisms. Okay. So if I look at the first isomorphism, so let me rewrite it. It's isomorphic to H is one of S. So I will always assume that. Then I then I, let me decompose both sides. So this is the this is a H decompose both sides using HKR. Structure sheet tensor, which is zero of tangent. And this side also is the structure sheaf. H1 of the structure sheaf plus H0 of the tangent. And it's very easy to see that this uh, vector space is isomorphic to this vector space. And by cancellation, you get that automorphism group of S, at least the Lie, uh, Lie algebra, is isomorphic to the Lie algebra of automorphism of the Sn. Okay? So from the automorphism of S, you can deduce an automorphism of the Hilbert scheme by relative Hilbert scheme uh, construction. And, and there is a, there is a morphism, and they are the same dimension. And you can show it's injective, so it's uh, it's an isomorphism. But this is not new results. This recovers uh, an old uh, computation for CR. He used some more different argument. Okay. But we can recover it uh, uh, without much of effort. Um, and also, which is more interesting, it's more interesting to look at HH2. 
uh, problem, I can directly write it here. So by HKR, we have three pieces, right? We have H0 of the uh, tangent of n. Oh, no, sorry, by tangent of n. H1 of the tangent and H2 of the structure sheet. And here we have many terms. Let me also write them down. So this is uh, H2 of OS plus H1 of the tangent plus H2, uh, H0 of the bitangent, which is anti-canonical. Uh, and yeah, let me just write it like this. Okay. The direct sum of wedge 2 of uh, that part, okay? You take the wedge 2 of this guy. So you also get wedge 2 of H1 of SOS plus, plus wedge 2 of H0 as tangent and H0 as tangent cancer with H1 of SOS. And then in the end, you get this H0 of S of uh, anti-canonical bond, okay, minus K. Okay. Now you want to identify both sides, which space correspond to which. And this is not very difficult to see that this space okay, correspond to the direct sum of this and uh, this. Okay. This is not very difficult. And this space, because H, H0, it's very easy to compute that this is this space plus this space. So the corollary we get, I want to state it as a theorem, is that H1 of the tangent of the Hilbert scheme is isomorphic, is isomorphic to uh, the sum of the rest of them. So it's uh, H1 of S to PS. You understand why? Because deformation goes to deformation. And uh, H0 S TS tensor H1 of SOS. <coughs> plus the anti-canonical. Okay, so this gives you that, it says that, okay, uh, a commutative deformation of the surface gives you a commutative deformation of the Hilbert scheme. A uh, Poisson structure on the surface gives you new commutative deformation of the Hilbert scheme. I hope for people doing a high pastry surface is very familiar with that, okay? And then what, what is more interesting is that this tensor product gives you also a direction, um, some directions of uh, Geometric deformation. So, see, this consequence is completely uh, classical. It has nothing to do with uh, Hashi cohomology, uh, yet, this recovers uh, several results of, uh, in the classical literature of uh, Fantaki and of uh, Hitchin. So, Hitchin proved that, let me not write it down. Uh, Fantaki proved that uh, if S is of general type, which implies that this tensor product is zero. Then the deformation, deformation space of S is isomorphic to the deformation space of Hilbert scheme. Okay, this is covering our uh, result. Because there is always an inclusion of the deformation space of S to the deform into the deformation space of the Hilbert scheme. And, uh, it's, uh, and the computation of the uh, of, uh, of uh, this cohomology says that if it's of general type, then these latter two spaces vanish, so there is isomorphism, deformation functor. And Hitchin proved that if H1 of OS is zero, then uh, the deformation space is exactly the deformation space of the S plus the, the deformation coming from the uh, Poisson structure. Uh, well, as far as I know, nobody proved things like, like H0 of tangent. If H0 of tangent is zero, then uh, uh, the same conclusion with Hitchin holds. But anyway, this result unifies these two results. And it says that uh, the deformation, the geometric deformation of the Hilbert scheme can be understood in three uh, pieces. And indeed, this uh, middle piece do happen, for example, for a bi-elliptic surface. So for bi-elliptic surface, these two vector spaces, they are dimension one. And there is a genuinely new uh, commutative deformation, I mean, uh, classical geometric deformation of the Hilbert scheme of uh, a bi elliptic surface. And I suspect that this is related to the uh, some covers of the, I mean, the cardinal factor of the Hilbert scheme of the, of the, of the bi elliptic surface. Okay? Uh, 
So I probably don't have time to uh, give, the, give the proof, but let me just indicate the, the ingredients in the proof. Ingredients in the proof. Okay. So the first step, as you can uh, guess, we use the deriving nurse. So this is the bridge line king rate combined with the world of Hyman. Seeing that the Hilbert scheme is isomorphic to the G SN equilibrium right, scheme, etc., uh, then you get uh, you get that the derived category of SN is the derived category of the quotient step. This is the symmetric quotient step. In the second part, we actually compute with the symmetric quotient step. In which case, we uh, prove that actually uh, a much more general theorem. It's like for any uh, x uh, smooth proper, okay, and any n, uh, n then, uh, then we, uh, h h uh, no sorry we, uh, the Hoshi homology with coefficient, which is more general than than Hoshi theoretical homology because it's just something with coefficient. So the quotient step, if we put uh, any object in the derivative category of that, then we can look at, that's our notation, we can look at f box tensor with itself n times, which lives on x to the n, uh, and acquires uh, this uh, linearization by the permutation group. So it descends to the stack. So you can look at the Hausch homology with coefficient. And this guy is isomorphic to the direct, to the direct sum. And you to the end and, uh, oh yeah, okay, let me, let me write the compacted form, sorry. Let me put uh, n together. Let me put a tn here. Then I get uh, the total sim of uh, n to uh, uh, h, uh, h, h home of uh, x in terms of f, but uh, with some i, ti, where Fi belongs to the derivative category of x itself, uh, which is defined by F tensor i to itself, then uh, invariant under the, uh, the cycle permutation of 1, 2, 3, 4, n. Okay. So anyway, this is an object here, concrete object here, and uh, we can compute them here. And uh, the method, and the method, if we use the uh, orbital, Hoshi post Rosenberg here, due to uh, arranging, uh, arranging comes along, public check. Yeah. Uh, to compute uh, the Hoshi homology of a step with some coefficient. So they can, uh, yeah, let me, let me finish by writing down such kind of uh, stack, actually. So if you have a stack, x, with some, uh, with some uh, coefficient, uh, e, f, x is some stack, then it's coefficient, then it's isomorphic to uh, uh, you know, r gamma of x of some uh, sigma of omega x. Uh, one, one, it's total symmetric tensor, E. Uh, <coughs> so it's I, e. sorry, the key point is that there is <coughs> inertia. So Ix is the inertia of X, and you take the total sum. So this is just a direct sum of the omega I shifted, uh, yeah. so this is shifted by one, so the thing becomes exterior power. So it's omega I shifted by I. So this is the pullback of the, of the shift, uh, yes, I should do this to the to the inertia, and uh, yeah, this is the isomorphism. So you can compute the uh, Hoshi homology with coefficients in terms of complete uh, coherent homology of the symmetric of the of the inertia with some uh, concrete uh, coherent shifts of that uh, inertia. And in this case, if we take e to the power of the shifted uh, shifted uh, to the canonical, then we recover the Hoshi cell co homology on the left hand side and on the 
the right hand side, a careful application of their theory uh, gives you this, uh, this result. Okay, um, yeah, I think I'll stop here. Thank you.